They are sleek. They are strong. They float on air. And they have some really cool names. They are hovercrafts designed by the engineers of tomorrow. And today, they are in a race for supremacy and bragging rights. Oh, and a good grade as well. Yeah. You see, these are 32 teams of second-year engineering students at UBC Okanagan, and they are racing hovercrafts designed from scratch. Their creations must not only be fast and easy to steer, but also be able to carry a decent load. The crew of El Toro seem to be doing something right. They finished the course in a time of 1 minute 4 seconds while carrying 3 kilograms. On the day, that would be good enough for a 7th place finish. And sort of taking a little bit of inspiration from uh, Chinese lanterns with the folds here. Uh, we made a, made a skirt out of paper, and that allows us to create a bigger pressure bubble underneath the craft. And the air flows into the, the space in between the two decks, and then comes out of these holes, and that the air fills this area, which creates a pressure bubble, and that's essentially how the hovercraft hovers. But the real beauty of it is inside of it, and what we made was a hollow chamber inside, and what that allows us to do is increase the pressure of the airflow, allowing us to give more lift, and hence, lift more weight, and it'll give us more stability as well. The folks behind Landshark are demonstrating their hovercraft. They have figured out that you can get a lot more points if you ignore the speed and carry a bigger payload. We came up with a relation between the lift of the fans based on the lift of the area underneath the whole hull, and from that we were able to use a bunch of math that we learned in engineering to determine how much weight we could actually lift. Math is good. Math is very good, especially in this course. We went with three lift fans to get the maximum amount of weight that we could because the more lift you have, the more weight you can get. They have to finish within two minutes and the minimum load that they carry is one kilogram on top of the, the weight of the hovercraft. Landshark would finish third overall on this day. The crew behind Just In Time have also calculated the advantages of weight bearing. Their hovercraft will be hauling the Elements of Fluid Mechanics, first edition, a hefty textbook indeed. This book is 1.2 kgs, but uh, yeah, in that sense it's more of a hauler. <laughs> But alas, just in time has steering problems and ends up dead last among the 32 teams. Kelsey under a lot of pressure there, a lot of people watching, the TV cameras rolling, and uh, it didn't happen. No, it didn't. I think we just really had problems with steering. Spent a lot of our time trying to make sure that it was going to lift well, and uh, just we had a lot of electrical problems. And we spent a lot of time working on the electrical up till last night, so we just didn't have time to make sure it was going to steer. This little lever right here just didn't give us enough steering capability. Just couldn't, couldn't maneuver it enough to get around the cones. The Chasse Marie, or Fishmonger's cart, has an unusual design. It doesn't look fast or strong, but looks can be deceiving. We're going for 10.5 kilograms uh, weight, so we should hopefully break the record. Last time we tried the 10 kilograms, it actually caught fire and we had to stop. So we've never actually got a full test out of it. The wheels are actually two of these motors powered up so we can actually run it. The other neat thing that we have is this geared system that allows the fan to move a full 90 degrees in either direction, giving us a lot more steering capabilities than a lot of the other teams. Like a Silverado, it's a tad slow off the mark, but like a good truck, it's also strong like an ox. Slow and steady she goes, without the smoke show and practice runs. It does the course in 53 seconds, but more importantly, tackles it with 10.5 kilograms on its, um, back. Apparently we're told that we're up 300 points by the next team or something, so yeah. So you got to be happy with that <laughs> performance. Very happy. What went right, do you think? We had good control of our machine because like a lot of other people drifted always to the side and stuff, whereas we just stayed right on track. The best thing is it, it didn't catch fire, right? No, it did not. It was good and bad. <laughs> It'd be fun to see it spark, but... <laughs> And that, take note, future engineering students, is the best of a very good crop on this day. And just so you know, this isn't all fun and games. This project is worth 35% of the final grade for applications of engineering design. The race itself, about 8%. Go, 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 go. It includes the race, it includes the evaluation that is going to be done by the judges, um, and it also includes three reports that they were supposed to, to hand in throughout the design procedures. Not all of it goes uh, into the device, it also goes into our report and stuff, the mark, but 
I'm not a teacher or anything, but that's that's got to be A plus there, right? <laughs> I hope so. Is it worth an A that my project? It is absolutely, absolutely. I think that uh, it shows that that the students can really think very broadly and 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 bring their ideas together to come up with something very interesting here, right?